Hello world! Curses and madness be upon you all my friends. I am Euclidean Vision, the emotional support, and as Echo is probably clogging up the DPS queues by now, uh, I'm just going to go and look at some more enemy units for the Overwatch 2 PvE instead. So today, we're going to be looking at the devils from down under, the Junkers. And so, if we're all ready to go, let's jam. <laughs> So, the Junkers are the third faction I'm proposing for the upcoming Overwatch 2, with their involvement likely coming as a reactionary measure to Null Sector's declaration of global war. Like, if anyone's going to be pissed off about that, it's the Junkers, so... <laughs> but to frame that against the others of the four factions I've proposed thus far, Null Sector and Talon are both actively mobilising to complete their own goals, whereas the Junkers and the Petrus forces of the UN will both be entering the fray in response to the rise of Null Sector and Overwatch respectively making this a conflict of five overall factions. But the inclusion of the Junkers particularly is bound to significantly affect the political landscape of the Overwatch world, which could mean we get to see some specifically Junker-led missions in Overwatch 2, or at the very least could give us some experience with the Junkers as antagonists or even accomplices to the missions at hand. And so in looking back at my previous videos on Talon and Null Sector, I felt each faction needed a bit more sort of distinction in their overall focus or battle style. So here I've tried to make the Junkers feel more chaotic and aggressive as a faction, which I think is pretty fitting, with plenty of melee units and forced movement to complement their more disruptive nature. And some particular mechanics to show how the Junkers can synergize despite this, even accidentally. With these ideas particularly having manifested due to the Junkers situation and their characterization, as each Junker individually has their own sort of determinate need to survive their difficult environment and will jump on any possible advantage they can, contributing to their overtly chaotic nature, but also like Null Sector, the Junkers as a whole do have a single focal leader in the Junker Queen and a unifying goal in killing all the robots, things that the other three factions sort of lack or at least complicate in certain capacities. But, you know, enough about political stances, let's talk battle stances. Hopefully you'll see what I've meant by all that as we move through these units, the first of which builds on that sense of pressure I'd like the Junkers to have in the Junker Scrapper, which would be very reminiscent of Borderlands' Psycho, very simple melee unit, rushes at you, tries to hit you with a wrench or some other sort of dangerous implement. Pretty simple for now, but we'll see how they end up synergizing with some units once I get into the more elemental based units, you'll see when I get there. And so to jump to another classic game series, we go with the Junker Splicer, which, taking after its Bioshock counterpart, would be a nimble melee slash ranged unit, jumping in your face with flips and jumping off the walls to slice you with hooks and things like this, but then being able to throw those hooks or knives or something of the like from a distance to strike at you in sort of most any situation. These two will synergize with the elemental units when I get into them, but I'll discuss that when I discuss the first proper elemental unit that will work with these units in tandem. And so on to sort of a familiar unit, but with a twist, the Junker Shotty. A shotgun unit, in case you hadn't guessed, wielding a special shotgun, lovingly referred to as Old Ducky. And how Old Ducky works is that any Junker Shotty unit once it's died, will leave behind Old Ducky on the floor for other Junker units to fight over. So any sort of lower class unit will be able to pick up Old Ducky and become a Junker Shotty, so it's sort of like an upgrade mechanic. Otherwise, it'd act pretty similar to the Talon Enforcer. Nothing too special about that aside from that specific mechanic. Obviously, as I've mentioned with other videos, your standard sort of ranged grunts like the Talon Trooper or the Nullifiers, you could obviously vary up their regular weapons a bit, giving them like assault rifles or twin pistols or single damage pistols, maybe like a rocket launcher, maybe that's a bit too far. <laughs> but I think a good way to differentiate the Junkers a little would be to give them um, a different movement mechanic, say on the Junker Merc, would be your standard assault rifle guy, you give them the classic roll that we've got on the Talon Trooper, but then say like the Junker Rogue could be a twin pistol unit that has like a slide mechanic, so it can slide behind your shields and shoot at you at the same time. Just making familiar units a little different and a bit more distinct to the actual playstyle of the Junkers. 
And so moving on to our first actual elemental unit in the Junker Greaser. The Junker Greaser works similarly to the Splicer in that it can attack from range and in melee, but at range it will throw an urn of oil, which leaves oil on the ground or on your characters, which will slow you down and make you susceptible to being set on fire, and it will then have sort of a flaming torch type weapon that it can then use the oil status to set you on fire and inflict a dot on you. Any other fire units won't set you on fire unless it's sort of specifically stated or you've been coated with oil, which can make the greaser synergize a lot with several of these units that we're going to discuss. And as mentioned with the Junker Scrapper and Splicer, how the greaser would synergize with these is that any melee units within the Junkers, I'll mention them all as they come up, will be able to be affected by their own elements. So the Junker Greaser, if it's able to accidentally strike at a Scrapper with its flaming torch, the Scrapper will then be set aflame and will add extra fire damage to its standard attacks. Same for the Junker Splicer when it's throwing its knives. If it's in the range of a fiery attack at the time, those knives will then be coated in fire dealing extra damage. And then to give you sort of another example of that, the Junker Biker, which will be a regular unit but on a hover bike using ramming attacks at first, but then you could maybe add like a sidecar to give it sort of a ranged capacity at maybe higher levels, and the bike as well, you could set it on fire. But that could have its own interactions in that if it gets set on fire too many times, it explodes, so you end up playing the enemy's tactics against them, but while it's on fire, it moves faster and deals more damage, or if it gets hit with electric damage, which we'll come to shortly, then maybe the bike goes much, much faster and eventually shuts down for a bit, so that gives you an opening to attack it and finish it off. Plenty of ways you can have the elements synergizing with these predominantly melee units. I think the sidecar ranged version would then become really powerful with those elements added on top of it. And then so to properly go into some of those element users, the Junker Pike, which uses the exhaust spear that we've seen in the Junktown Scrapyard, which would be a close range melee unit predominantly, but you could also give it like a flamethrower setting or give it the ability to shoot fireballs. You could also have it throw the spear and then the spear explodes and then it has to go and reclaim it. So it almost sort of works like the boom hammer from Bloodborne. And talking of Bloodborne, let's move on to something similar based on the Tonitrus, the Junker Clash, who uses the electric saw type weapon that we again see in the scrapyard. And this could open you up to sort of alternate forms like when it hasn't electrified the blade, it just deals normal melee attack damage, but once it has electrified the blade, it gets bigger sweeping attacks or is able to deal like a ranged lightning slice at you. And then sticking with the scrapyard weapons theme, the Junker Fulcrum, which uses the scythe hammer thing that we've seen, which you could have changing between the scythe and hammer forms for faster or slower but stronger attacks. And obviously like Bloodborne's Kirkhammer, the Church Pick, the Amygdalan Arm, there's a bunch of influences there. You could have this having some really interesting transformation attacks as the Fulcrum switches between Scythe and Hammer forms. I think this is one that you could also give like a hook maneuver if, when it extends the Scythe and pulls you in, or they could use the Hammer End to smash into the ground to create some temporary walls. And then sort of sticking with the sort of tool theme, the Junker Buzzsaw, which would use a circular saw gun to an extent in that it has a sustained melee attack at close range, activating the saw to charge in your face. But then they could also fire big ass saw projectiles across the map, damaging you as they slide through and then sticking in the ground. So if you do walk through them, you take additional damage. And this is another unit I reckon that could be augmented by the other elemental units. If the saws are on fire when they strike you, they inflict fire damage they're electric, maybe they bounce around or something like that, that'd be really interesting. There's loads of things you could do with that. And so to segue from that sort of tech tool based angle, the Junker Punk he uses a steam gun. We needed to get some sort of steampunk influence in here. I think this would be really good with lots of knockback, like jets of steam, almost like a shotgun. And you could even play with some vision obscuring where it releases a steam cloud to obscure your vision of your targets. And then to take that sort of a little further, the Junker Smogger, which will act quite similarly to League of Legends Singed, in that they'd basically just run around leaving poison everywhere. <laughs> very simple unit, but I think it'd be very different to deal with in combat. 
And so then to move on to the next sort of section, which I sort of hadn't outlined, all those units were my sort of frontline junker units. We'll then go into the backliners, the tanks, and the supports as we go from here. The first of which, the backliners, is the junker bomber, which is sort of just a stripped back junk rat, but we might give them some self-damaging mobility, like Junkrat could sort of been, or closer to it, his original influence in the demo man. Again, giving even the range damage units of the Junkers some sort of aggressive traits. So then onto one with some pretty obvious influence, the Junker Ranger, which would use a boomerang. And I think you can keep this unit fairly simple, as long as you then allow it to be augmented by the other elemental units with the boomerang leaving behind fiery trails, or emanating electricity, or possibly if thrown from within a steam cloud, makes the steam cloud extend, so you have further vision obscurity, or the steam could just make the boomerang fly faster, you could play with a few things like that, but ultimately the Junker Ranger would be about doing this sort of repetitive back and forth area damage. Which leads me on to a more familiar unit in the Junker Hunter which would basically work like your sniper units that we've had thus far, but I think we can make this a bit more distinct by giving it a ghillie suit, so making it hard to distinguish on its own terms. As I mentioned with the Talon Sniper, you could give them a vision obscuring cloud or a visual clone when they take too much damage, and I've even speculated that the Null Wraith wields a scythe that doubles as a sniper rifle. So, again, to make the Junkers version distinct, we can get rid of a lot of the mobility that the Talon Sniper has, but make them hard to find from the outset, aside from by their laser beam. Which then leads me on to one that's thematically a bit similar, but actually ends up working way more like Junkrat <laughs> as the Junker Bomber, the Junker Trapper. Who sort of counts as a supportive unit, I guess, in that they would use a ranged immobilizing net that they shoot at you from like a net gun to trap you in place, but they could also have bear traps like Junkrat's trap that they leave around the map, or you could even have them doing something like Octane's jump pads from Apex Legends, in that they could set them up to both advantage their own units and maybe accidentally propel you into the sky that might not be what you need at the time, but if you can take advantage of it, why not? Adds to the gameplay on both levels, do you know? Maybe you can even take the jump pad as a pickup if you beat the trapper in a certain way. Which then leads me on to sort of like two upgrades of more familiar units in the Junker Beretta and the Junker Terror. The Junker Beretta obviously having a big ass gun arm and the Junker Terror obviously having a big ass gun leg. And you could make these just far more mobile or tanky versions of your classic range damage units. And whether you're able to give them more specific attacks like using their gun to jump high up in the air and rain down from above or maybe giving the gun arm a projected barrier, something like that, make them slightly more of an off-tank kind of unit. Even just aesthetically, I think it'd be a cool improvement over your standard sort of grunt character. And then the final backliner sort of unit, that again sort of counts as like a support unit, and will make it pretty clear that I played Prey recently in the Junker Camo, which would be a unit that disguises itself as pieces of the environment and will use sleep darts on you. It won't be a particularly dangerous enemy on its own, but it could add this whole new sort of dynamic to how you end up fighting the Junkers. And that being said, we're going to move on to something that will make you fight the Junkers a bit differently, the tank units. Starting off with one of the very clear sort of lore based ones, the Junker Mech Rider. And you can obviously take from the actual sort of shown mechs that we've seen in Junker Town, but you can also obviously build off several iterations of mechs from the existing game or from other sort of franchises. And you could possibly even have some of these named mechs show up as like special mini bosses, that'd be pretty funky too. But then on to some more sort of original ideas, the Junker Jack, which would be not that original actually, <laughs> as is again being taken sort of from Bioshock Infinite in the unit called the Handyman, which would be a unit with big ass uh, cyborg arms and a sturdier frame than most, which you can have having sort of like a jump and a ground slam, making this again a really like strong melee unit, pressuring you to keep on your toes. But you can also have it divert into more ranged attacks at higher levels, throwing rocks or elements of the environment at you. Maybe it's able to pick you up and throw you away from your allies at high levels. Maybe it even throws its own allies at you or towards you and again in sort of a supportive manner that could be a really interesting unit to play with 
Then onto one that's a bit more simple by comparison, the Junker Crank, which would just be sort of a whole a whole hogging whole hog. <laughs> just a big beefy guy constantly fucking shooting. Maybe give him a big ass reload time so that you sort of play with the timing of how you should engage on him. But I think that's a pretty simple unit that can make any encounter a bit more interesting or maybe at least a bit more difficult. Which the next one could also do in the Junker Steamroller, which would be sort of a large heavy damage vehicle that will travel in these projected straight lines, dealing like massive damage if they manage to run you over. That could be just like an insta KO to be honest. Depends on how fair that ends up feeling, given how it sets up its attacks at least. But this, like the biker, I reckon you could have be augmented by the elemental classes as well. Uh, then on to one that is a bit more taking from the actual lore. In a unit that uses Omnic Remains as a kind of weapon, the Junker Puppeteer. Which would be quite a low health unit in itself, but it'd be the only sort of proper barrier unit that I can think that I've designed for the Junkers thus far. Projecting a puppet from itself with hard light strings or something weird like this. The Puppeteer projects an Omnic that projects a big rectangular barrier like a Reinhardt. So it's essentially an ability based tank and neutralizing the Puppeteer itself rather than the actual puppet might be the better way forward to stop it from protecting its team. Then onto the Junker Max Power, again a barrier wielding unit but I think that this one should be a physical barrier user like Borderlands Nomad enemies. And I think these would be pretty cool to tie sort of back to the tool based weaponry and give them either like a magnet or a claw on a chain. Sort of like a miniature version of what you'd see in a scrapyard to use as some kind of like a flail, something weird like that. Could have pulls, throws, could catch incoming fire to add to its damage or its size or something like that. That could be pretty nuts. And so speaking of pretty nuts, here is my requisite recluse mention for these videos, the Junker Wrath. Which you could maybe make a little more like Urgot from League of Legends, given the sort of general thematics of the Junkers thus far. But nah, g give us Recluse Man, just like give us some version of that. Make her more focused on the mouth beam in the Junker iteration, or you could make her more focused on how the spider mines work. If you're going to have a Recluse iteration in every faction, make them all focus one way or t'other within what seems to be Recluse's original kit. I think that's the best way forward there. And to sort of celebrate that sort of feeling of like fandom over a particular character, the Junker Yardi, which would be a Wrecking Ball superfan. A unit so dedicated to Wrecking Ball's prominence in the scrapyard that they've made their own sort of like spiked metal jacket that they can roll up into sort of like Samus's ball form. So you'd have sort of like a mini Wrecking Ball running around causing chaos. That'd be one again that you could maybe have be affected by the other elemental units. And then for my final tank, and to sort of bridge the gap into the supports, with the Junker Iron Lung, which would be a healer tank similar to the 321 Roadhog that we got, using an actual iron lung. This would again be sort of a very steampunk influenced unit design. Emitting hydrogen from their special mechanical lung. You could also have them doing AoE knockback, sort of like mentioned with the Junker Punk, the steam gun user. And as mentioned, they'd be using something like Roadhog's old healing field. Potentially have the ability to self-heal as well. You could put some vision obscuring in there. But a very particular mechanic I think would be pretty cool for this unit would be a sacrifice mechanic. And if it's surrounded by dead units, it can sacrifice, say, a set amount of health to resurrect a set number of units respective to that amount of health in the area. So I think it could be quite a fun unit to fight against in that it's keeping its team up when it goes and then if its team does die it's able to sort of mitigate that in some respect as well. Which could really change how you fight it, that could be really interesting. And sort of plays back into that Junker angle of them all having this one sort of determinate cause that they probably all do agree upon. Kill, kill all the robots. <laughs> And so, to, as I said, to bridge into the supports with a support that's also sort of tanky in its ways, but maybe not in its own health department, the Junker Nomad, which would be a unit that uses sort of a mechanised didgeridoo, shooting wind projectiles and wind blasts, similar again to the Iron Lung and the Punk, but maybe fighting a bit more at range in that respect, and having something like a Healing Mist Burst, or the ability to summon sort of a wind pressure dome shield around them. So the Nomad and the Iron Lung are both sort of playing with these similar concepts of bridging between 
like a bruiser tank and a area support healer. But then to move on to the first sort of definitive Junker support actual healer, a unit that I've based sort of off an old OC hero concept, the Junker Match, which was the original name for my Junker OC Match, a young sort of flamethrower witch type character that would use a flamethrower both to deal damage and to heal, but also had an ability called Cauterize, where their cone of flame would reduce into a beam, but it was able to either overheal or deal anti-heal, which I think could be really interesting to come up against. I also had them sticking to that sort of witch theme, being able to ride on their flamethrower as a sort of mobility slash damage slash heal area sort of ability. So that could be really nuts to fight against, really chaotic, mobile, area damage and heal sort of character. You could even take that a little further, um, stealing an idea from Mastery and Gamer here. If you deal damage to her flame tank, the tank will explode, dealing damage back to you, but maybe if you then deal enough damage to it, it explodes, killing the match or dealing damage to everything in the area. But that again could set certain units on fire, which then amplifies them, so you'd have to be careful about when and where you destroy the tank on the match or you kill them yourself. That could be a really cool sort of game dynamic to have. And then sticking with the elemental theme, back to an electric type, the Junker Rocker, which would be a support unit that wields a guitar, of course, similar to Devil May Cry's Nevin Blade, that allows them to emit an electric AoE or maybe even shoot mini EMP projectiles, which is why I said this is sort of a support. But you could also give them like distortion chords, like Lucio's boop, or maybe even like a speed buff aura as they emit sort of electricity around them, dealing damage and carrying their units forward to kick you in the face. The rocker would synergize with things like the scrapper really well, electrifying them and speeding them right up into your grill. And then kind of a dark unit, this one actually is, I was just playing with something that sounds really fun and taking the piss, like the next one, the Junker Radiator, which would be a low health unit that constantly emits radiation. And for allies, this would heal, it would work just sort of like Lucio does normally, but you could have this unit cancel the heal to emit a huge burst of AoE damage, possibly killing itself in the process, possibly not, maybe leaving behind an area of radiation, and that's a unit I can definitely see being influenced by elemental units. Either adding fire, electricity, steam, poison, or the ice that will come into shortly into their AoE radiation. And okay, so back to a bit more of a fun unit, because that was a bit... Well, imagining just an irradiated person just slowly melting everybody around them was a bit much. The Junker Cheerleader, which would be... A very supportive unit, I don't think you'd have deal any damage whatsoever, but its sole purpose is to encourage nearby units using its megaphone to boost their damage, and you could possibly have them also resurrect units by being like, get back on your feet you scumbag! But of course, if you want to give them damage, you can obviously give them something similar to Lucio's Sonic technology again. Having several Junker units all have this similar ability of like a Lucio boop, really sort of pushes that chaotic, disruptive nature of theirs, I think. But then on to a bit more of a concise and, like, I think, like, really reliable unit, the Junker Surgeon. And this is TF2's medic with the bone saw and the beam heal. So in melee range, it can inflict a bleed status on you with a melee strike, but then it also has, like, a beam on top of the bone saw to slowly heal its allies over time, just like Mercy. And then stick with something sort of familiar before I do my final unit that's really not that familiar. <laughs> the Junker Munitions, which would be sort of like an engineer, sort of like Bruce, in its predominantly focused around pickups. Whether those be throwing cans of hydrogen for its allies to pick up and heal themselves, whether it throws out armor packs or repair packs, something like that. Uh, I think you'd also want this unit to use a little hammer and maybe like an armor boost so it can rush at you like Torbjorn and maybe even have the elemental units affect it so its little hammer ends up dealing like crazy extra damage based on the element that it gets augmented with. Which then leads me on to my final original unit that is probably a bit too complicated but this is why it's kind of an enemy unit rather than an actual hero concept, the Junker Chemist, which is a unit that I've got using three types of grenades 
two reactions from those grenades and sort of an ultimate in a Hulk mode whereby they drink some crazy concoction and it turns them into a big ulting humanoid Winston, for, for instance. But in terms of the grenades, before you build them up to that point, the three grenades that they can use are a water grenade that will leave a slowing field on the floor, an acid grenade that leaves a damage over time field on the floor, and a heal grenade that leaves a heal over time field on the floor. The two actions that they can then take regarding those fields are catalyze and reduce. You'd obviously have to give these all very clear animations so it's clear what you're going to be coming up against. So the catalyst and the reduction agent would probably have their own very particular animations or technology that does it, something like that. But when the water field is catalyzed, the water field turns into a steam field that deals damage over time and obscures your vision. Catalyzing the acid field will turn the acid into a corrosive agent, which will deal burst damage as the field disperses, but it will then make you corroded, taking more damage for the next whatever duration. And catalyzing the heal field just turns the heal over time field into a big AoE burst heal. And so then on to the reduction reaction, reducing the water field will turn it into an ice field, which will freeze anything in that space and will also create ice terrain say something like an ice dome that's a physical obstruction like May's ice wall. Then reducing the acid field will turn it into sludge that will immobilize you in place, but obviously you can still look around and deal damage as you are. That's a good point to raise. If you're frozen in the ice, if you're inside the terrain, you're frozen but you can't take any damage. So there's a sort of slight difference between those. If you're immobilized, you can still deal damage, but if you're frozen, you can't actually be hurt, but you can't do anything yourself and the terrain can benefit both you and the enemy PvE units. And finally, reducing the heal field will turn the heal over time field into a heal pickup, like a health pack, for the units to then use whenever they see fit. And so that, with that over, really overcomplicated last unit in the Junker Chemist, that's all the actual units that I have in mind for the Junkers themselves. We could see them striking some sort of alliances with factions like Los Muertos, in that they're both sort of outlaw factions, the same as the Deadlock Gang. But given that Los Muertos and the Deadlock Gang both have Omnics in them, that's probably unlikely or would only be sort of a business connection. You could have them connecting with the Shimadas, they're like a criminal gang. But the Shimada, we're not really sure what sort of state they're in exactly at present, or whether they would ally with people exactly like the Junkers or anything. That's really to be developed as we go forward, potentially. Who the Junkers could even ally with. I mean, maybe Talon? Maybe. I've mentioned in the Talon video that they could well employ Junkrat and Roadhog. I don't think that's out of the question by any means. So we could maybe see the Junkers inheriting some sort of things from Talon as well. And of course, as I've brought them up, the Junker heroes have got to feature in some capacity, especially Junkrat and Roadhog. Wrecking Ball would be cool to bring in, but it's obviously been stated that he isn't at Junkertown anymore, and he doesn't consider himself a Junker. He's not really going to do what the Queen has to say, unless we get that developed and she has got something on Wrecking Ball to bring him back to Junkertown. And so as I've brought her up, the Junker Queen, she's got a fucking turn up, man. Like, Tank Girl meets fucking Ripley. Yeah, man, give me that shit. She's going to be super fun. I have no idea what she's going to do. I think she could end up using some of the weapons I mentioned from the scrapyard. But yeah, uh, I don't have any solid ideas on how the Junk Queen could actually work. I think that she might be used more as like a story character. Something like how I think you could use Bruce, the engineer that Roadhog meets in Wasted Land. And you could even make him, again, into some sort of mini boss fight in that he's the super engineer and he's got abilities from several different Junker units under his belt. And so with that, before I truly do go down under, those are all my Junker units for the upcoming Prospective Overwatch 2. If you like any of these ideas, please let me know down in the comments, tell me how they could be improved, give me ideas for your own units, tell me if some of my ideas are kind of pointless or if we could merge units together to make them better, tell me what you think of how the units synergize together, if there's any other ways we can do that, any ideas you have at all, like, throw them down below and let's see if we can push the boat out for Overwatch 2 to make it the game that it really could be. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves thus far, thank you for staying with me to this point. 
Hopefully I'll see you in the final part of this series where we discuss the Petrus forces of the UN, which will feature several different aspects of the Overwatch universe. I hope you guys will really like that one, actually. But with that, I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Actually, pretty fucking done in after what is a long recording session for this video. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed again. Take care of yourselves out there with everything going on, my friends. And may the glorious light of Best Girl shine within you. Bye-bye.